Hey, this is Jerry from Blitz Studio, and in this particular version of the Helix Jump tutorial series, we're going to be looking at level generation. So this is something I think that you can use for a lot of different types of games. It's a little bit longer, but there's a lot of information in here that I think is really, really great. So if you're ready to get generating, let's go. Okay, so here we are in Unity. And I want to go ahead and just show you I've done a few things. So I've created a UI for start. So it's simply just a panel and a start button inside of it. I've also created several different platforms for generating levels. Okay. So these are just base platforms. I have a base that's just the cylinder and all of the different platforms that make up the pieces of the pie that make up that platform. So I've created 10 different versions of those platforms using that base. So they all have the cylinder in the middle. Some of them have holes in multiple spots. They also have enemies and enemy walls. So there's 10 different versions of those. Also a key note here is that I, the very first start position that I want these to be in there's always a regular green platform because if I have this at the first position of the layer of our whole level, I want the player to be able to bounce on that first spot and not have an enemy there. So that's key. Cool. So let's go ahead and go back to our main scene. The other thing that I have set up here is that I have my ball turned off. I also have my ball manager turned off as well. So we're going to go ahead and set up a new FSM that is going to be specific for our level manager. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new empty game object. I'm going to call this level manager. And then with this level manager, we're actually going to have four states. So let's go ahead and get this started. I'm going to add a new FSM. And in this FSM, this is just going to be listening to see if somebody clicks this button. So we're going to go ahead and just have start button as the state. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and just take my start button, just drag it right down into my state, select button, UI, and button on click event. Cool. So now once somebody has clicked on that, we need to send them to a new event. So let's call this generate. Go ahead and add that transition. I'm going to control click or command click and go off to a new state. And in this first state, what I want to do is I want to take one of those 10 prefab layers that I've created and I want to grab one of those and I want to put it in the scene. And the reason I'm doing that specifically for the first layer is that I want to be able to have all the others be randomly rotated, but I don't want that first one to be randomly rotated because I specifically allow the user to be able to bounce on the first spot. So let's go ahead and call this first layer. Cool. And what is it we want to do? I've got those 10 different layers and I want to be able to select one of those. So what we're going to do is create an array here. First, we need to create an array in our variables. So I'm going to go down to my new variable and we'll just call this layers. And it needs to be a variable type of array. I'm going to go ahead and click add. An array is just a list of something. List of game objects, list of numbers, lists of ints, list of strings. It's just a list. It's a container. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to specifically have this layers be not a float, which is the default. We want to have it be game objects. Okay. So now it's asking me for a size. So how many list items do we need? Well, I've got 10 of those prefab platform layers over here. So I'm going to have 10 slots. So I'm going to take the size to 10. And now you can see I have 10 slots to stick those platforms. So I'm just going to easily just drag those over and pop those into place. Cool. Now I have that done. I also need to create an array of the rotations. Now my platform, each of those pieces of pie that make up the plat platform layer are 30 degrees. So I want to create rotations that are specifically 30 degrees. So I want to go ahead and do a new array. So we're going to go ahead and have this be rotation and we'll click add. 
And then we need to specify what type of an array it is. The first one, the first array we created was a game object array. The second one, we need it to be specifically a float because it's the number of the rotation of the Y axis that we're going to be updating. And that is a float number. And the size of that is going to be 12 because 360 degrees divided by 30, each of those pie pieces are 30 degrees, that's going to create 12 different options. Okay, so there's the first one's going to be zero. The next one, 30, and I'm going to keep iterating 30 here. Boom, there we go. So I have 12 options of each 30 degrees rotation. Okay, so we have both of those arrays. Now, let's in this first layer, what we want to do is to go ahead and we want to grab one of those layers out of our array. So we're going to do an array get random. And here we go. I have it at the top. Array get random. What array is it we're going to grab from? We're going to grab from our layers array. And here you can see, because I have debug turned on, you can see a list of all the platforms that I have in there. And then what we want to do is we want to grab one of those randomly, and we're going to store that as a new variable. So we're going to take one of those randomly, and I'm going to have this be selected layer. So whichever one we selected, we're going to store it as selected layer. Cool. Now that I've done that, I need to go ahead and then take that and put it into my scene. I'm going to go ahead and do a create object. All right, so I have a create object. So we're going to take, and we need to add this underneath of our array get random. And I'm going to deselect the use variable so that we can use a variable. And we're going to use the selected layer. And here we've got a couple different options, parent and spawn point. Now we don't have to specify a parent if we don't want to, but I want to go ahead and just keep it, things organized. So I want to specify a parent. So I'm going to have my parent be this platforms game object. And I have that platforms game object at 000, 000 in the scene. And then I also have a spawn point. Now I could use the platforms as the spawn point, but in this case, I want to move that spawn point down each time I create a layer. So I'm going to go ahead and use my layer spawn as the spawn point. Again, that's at 000, zero as well, but we're going to be moving that here shortly. Cool. So let's go ahead and get this a test real quick. Just to see if we create one layer. So I hit play. Boom. There we go. We now have one layer in our scene and the chosen layer was platform 06. Okay. So it did grab randomly out of our array. So let's go ahead and stop. Let's continue our level manager. All right, now that we've done that, we need to go ahead and then go to another state. So I'm going to add a finished transition here. So once we're done grabbing that and creating a new object, we need to go ahead and go to a new state. Okay, so now that we have this new state, what is it we want to do? Well, we want to go ahead and create another one of those layers. But we want to do this where it's pushed down by two units because each of those layers are two units tall. How I'm going to do that is to do a float subtract. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new variable and we're going to call this spawn position. Okay. And we want to subtract two. So this is just subtracting two from a number. And then we're going to use that number to move our position of our spawn point. So we're going to go ahead and do a set position and the position of the game object that we're going to to set is our spawn point. So, so our layer spawn, we're going to set it based off of our spawn position. So we're going to subtract two and then we're going to move our spawn point. So it's just going to move it down by two. Okay. So now that I'm, I'm setting the position of the spawn point, I need to grab a random rotation. So again, we're going to use the get random array. And then we're going to choose which array it's the rotation and we're going to store our selected rotation as a new variable and we'll call this selected rotation. All right. So now that we have our array get random for our rotation, we can go ahead and use the first two actions that we used in our first layer. So array get random and create objects. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy those, paste those over. And with our array get random, we have stored that as selected layer. Then we're creating an object selected layer from our platform array. And we also want to make sure that we store this object back to selected layer again. 
once we put that on the screen, we need to go ahead and rotate it. We, we're grabbing a random rotation up here, but now we need to rotate that game object based off of that rotation. So let's do a set rotation. And the game object that we are going to use or rotate is our selected layer. And we're gonna rotate it based off of the Y angle, which is our selected rotation. So let's give this a test real quick. We should have two new game objects on the screen with one being underneath the other and that second one being rotated. So let's go ahead and give it a play. And I'll hit the play button. Boom, we now have two different layers. So let's go ahead and and it has chosen uh, both platform tens, which is perfectly fine. But the second one, you can see that it's rotated at an angle of 150 degrees. Cool. Now that we've done that, we can now choose how many of these layers do we want to make up a level. I think in Helix Jump, it's probably 40 or 50 different layers. So let's go ahead and with our level manager, we want to do a loop action. So loop, so we're going to drag that down. And now it's saying how many times do you want to loop? Well, we've created one layer at the top in this second state. We can then go through that loop many times if we want to. So, and I do have one bottom platform that I want, which is not going to be part of the loop. So if we create 20 different layers, we've got the first one and we've got the end one. So it means we need to do this 18 times in the middle. So let's go ahead, but I'm just going to make it 10. So let's do 10 loops. And we don't need to store the current loop for anything. Uh, loop event, I'm just gonna go ahead and use generate again. And we'll add that transition and it's just gonna loop back on itself. And then once it's done looping through that 10 times, we wanna go off to a new state. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a finished transition. Go ahead and add that transition and let's go off to a new state. We'll just call this end layer. Cool. So now that we have that in there, what is it we want to do? Well, again, I have a prefab that is level complete. So let's just look at that real quick. So again, it is the end bottom cylinder with the platforms as pink and it's complete. So let's go back to our level manager. So what we want to do is we want to generate one of those on the screen. So we're going to go ahead and use a create object again. And the game object that we are going to create is our level complete layer. And the parent is still going to be the platforms. The spawn point is also gonna be our layer spawn. But the position here, we need to also do the same thing where we're doing a float subtract. So let's do a float subtract and set layer spawn position so we can just copy those. We're gonna go ahead and paste those down in and we want those to be before we create our object that should give us the very, very last layer. The other thing we wanna do is we wanna turn this UI off. So I'm gonna go ahead and at the end here, I'm gonna just drag my UI start right down into my state and the game object, we're just gonna do activate game object and we're not gonna activate it, we want to deactivate it. So we wanna take that and then turn off our game object. So I'm gonna activate and just uncheck there. The other thing that we wanna do is we also have our ball and our ball manager turned off. So I need to activate those. So we're gonna deactivate our UI start, then we're gonna activate our ball and our ball manager. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna drag those down, game object, activate game object. And we wanna go ahead and have that checked. And we're also gonna do the same thing with our ball manager. So game object, activate game object, and we wanna make sure that is checked. So now we should have a completed working level. So let's go ahead and give this a play. Let me just drag this down so we can see a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and just zoom out slightly and let's hit play. So I'm gonna hit play button and boom. Now we have a full complete level. It's chosen random layers out of our array. It's randomly rotated and continually moved down the scene until we have the very end. So there you go. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and something you can use for your game. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next tutorial is available. Until next time.